Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 5th of December. India and Germany Inc. Migration and Mobility Pact discuss key global challenges. Imran Khan's politics aims to undermine foundation of Pakistan, says PM Shehbaz. And Afghan Taliban blames foreign Islamic State fighter for Pakistan embassy attack. And now for all the details. The foreign ministers of India and Germany on Monday inked a migration and mobility partnership pact after holding comprehensive discussions in New Delhi to boost bilateral ties. During the meeting, they also discussed key global challenges including the Ukraine conflict, situation in Afghanistan, and the issue of terrorism. Germany's Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock on Monday met her Indian counterpart S. J. Shankar in New Delhi and held discussions on ways to further boost bilateral ties and on key global challenges including the Russia-Ukraine conflict, China, Afghanistan and terrorism. Following their talks, the two leaders signed a migration and mobility partnership deal designed to facilitate Indian skilled workers university students and apprentices to visit Germany. In a joint briefing, Baerbock said Germany sees in India great potential for further cooperation on economic and security issues. Asked whether she saw India as a replacement partner for China, she said no, adding that India had always been a partner for Germany and the European Union. Jay Shankar, on the other hand, strongly defended India's import of crude oil from Russia while noting that it is largely driven by market forces. Indien war schon immer Partner ähm, für Deutschland und auch Partner für die Europäische Union. Aber diese Partnerschaft, die wollen wir weiter vertiefen und wollen wir weiter ausbauen. Earlier in the day, the German foreign minister also paid floral tributes at the memorial of Indian freedom struggle leader Mahatma Gandhi in New Delhi. Her visit comes four days after India formally took over the presidency of the G20 grouping. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi cast his vote as his home state Gujarat held the final phase of assembly election on Monday. Considered the bastion of PM Modi, his ruling BJP has never lost in elections in the state since 1995. Apart from the main opposition Congress, the other main contender is the Ahmadmi Party. Voting for the second and the final phase of assembly election was held on Thursday in India's western Gujarat state. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who hails from the western industrial state, also exercised his franchise at Ahmedabad's Nishan Public School. Later addressing reporters, the Prime Minister thanked the people of Gujarat for taking part in the election process, as well as the voters in Himachal Pradesh and Delhi, where polls were held recently. He also lauded the Election Commission for conducting the polls peacefully. Interior Minister Amit Shah also cast his vote in his home state. In the first phase of election held on Thursday, 89 constituencies of southern Gujarat, Kutch and Saurashtra had gone to polls. In the final phase, voting took place in 93 seats across 14 districts. PM Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party has not lost in Gujarat Assembly election since 1995 and Modi himself served as the Chief Minister of the state for nearly 13 years. Modi remains popular despite criticism of inflation and unemployment. Political analysts suggest a seventh straight term for the Safran Party in Gujarat, dismissing any signs of anti-incumbency. In the last state election five years ago, the BJP won 99 seats in the 182-member assembly while Congress got 77. This time, there is a three-way contest with Congress and the Aam Admi Party also looking to make inroads in the BJP bastion. The results are expected on December 8th. 
In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's PM Shehbaz Sharif on Sunday said PTI chairman's politics is aimed to make his way to power by undermining the foundation on which the country stands. The remarks came as Imran Khan has demanded the ruling coalition to sit for talks and hold elections by March. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Sunday lashed out at opposition PTI chairman and former Premier Imran Khan for his demand of early elections. Taking to Twitter, Sharif said Imran's politics is aimed at making his way to power by undermining the foundation of the country. Referring to Khan's statement over the dissolution of provincial assemblies in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Punjab, Sharif said it was Khan's diatribe against parliamentary democracy of Pakistan. Meanwhile, PTI chief Imran Khan in address to Khyber Pakhtunkhwa parliamentary party meeting has claimed 75% of citizens want elections to bring economic and political stability in Pakistan. Imran Khan talking to a local news channel said that his party wants the elections to be held latest by March. He added if the government does not agree to PTI's demand, they will proceed with dissolving the assemblies where PTI and its allies are in power. Imran Khan is the only Prime Minister in Pakistan who was removed from office after failing a no-confidence motion. Since his ouster in April, he has been demanding snap polls in the South Asian nation. Moving on, Pakistan has never qualified for a World Cup tournament, but many young people still enroll in soccer academies to train for hours each day in Leari, one of the Karachi's poorest areas, hoping to take an international pitch one day. The soccer crazed neighborhood of Liari is also known as Mini Brazil. Have a look. In a dusty alleyway on the streets of Liari, young boys kick a soccer ball around while the flags of the World Cup countries flutter in the wind overhead. The excitement and the love of the game is spellable in Liari, a soccer crazed Pakistani neighborhood, which is also known as Mini Brazil. Lairi is one of the poorest neighborhoods in the port city of Karachi. But every four years, its narrow alleyways get plastered and painted with colors of Brazil, Spain and Portugal and large murals of soccer stars. Pakistan has never qualified for a World Cup tournament, but many young residents still enroll in soccer academies to train for hours each day in Lairi, hoping to take an international pitch one day. There is such a fear that the football world cup is not in Liari. There are so many videos on social media. So I want to say that FIFA should be involved in the football in Liari. So that they can do a program here and play here in football. मतलब जिस लेवल पे शायकीन खेलने वालों की है उतनी तादाद देखने वालों की भी है। Last week when Brazil played Switzerland, thousands gathered in Mini Brazil in front of large screens to watch their favorite team. The atmosphere was raucous with music playing and many turning out in the classic yellow and green jerseys of Brazil. इस बार इस कदर है हम सुबह जो पे गए हैं जो शेड पेन के गए हैं और अभी तक रात हुआ है मैच स्टार्ट है इस कदर हमें शेड अभी तक पेन है अगर आ रहे भी हमें शेड पेना रहेगा जीत है भी हमें शेड पेना रहेगा हम उतारेंगे नहीं बिल्कुल When Brazil sealed their entry into the knockout stages with 1-0 win over Switzerland, the fans erupted into wild cheers and dance. In the otherwise cricket-loving Pakistan, football is a popular sport, particularly in rural areas. Yet. The national team is ranked 200 in the FIFA World Rankings. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban on Monday said that the Islamic State militant attack on Pakistan's embassy in Kabul was carried out with the involvement of unidentified foreign groups with the intention of sowing distrust with Pakistan. Pakistan for decades had good relations with the Afghan Taliban, but recently, Ties have been strained over security concerns on their common border. 
Taliban spokesperson Zabihullah Mujahid on Monday said that an Islamic State militant attack on Pakistan's embassy in Kabul was carried out with the involvement of unidentified foreign groups with the intention of sowing distrust with Pakistan. He added that Taliban authorities had arrested one suspect and recovered two guns. Islamic State, which fights the Taliban in Afghanistan, on Sunday claimed responsibility for the Friday gun attack on the Pakistani embassy. The Islamic State affiliate in Afghanistan has claimed several high-profile attacks in Kabul in recent months, including a suicide blast outside the Russian embassy in September. Pakistan for decades had good relations with the Afghan Taliban, but recently ties have strained over security concerns on their common border. Pakistan had earlier said that it was consulting Afghan authorities to verify the report of an Islamic State claim of responsibility for the attack and the country had no plan to close the embassy and the head of the mission was in Pakistan for consultations. In news from Sri Lanka, a Sri Lankan lawmaker has warned that he will launch a Go China campaign against the Chinese embassy and their government as he accused the Asian superpower for pushing his nation into a debt trap. The Chinese embassy has refuted the acquisition. The altercation comes midst of debt restructuring of the island nation, with China being the largest lender for Sri Lanka. Sri Lankan parliamentarian Shanakian Rasamanikam has warned that he will launch Go China campaign if the Chinese embassy and their government don't work for the benefit of Lanka and fail to restructure the debt of the island nation, local media has reported. The Tamil National Alliance lawmaker further attacking the Chinese embassy said, what does the embassy have to do with the matters that are discussed in the Lankan parliament? His remarks were in reference to the recent altercation after the lawmaker accused China for pushing the island nation into its debt trap. The embassy, in response on Twitter, called the acquisition a myth. When you lent money to this country, you knew the economy was collapsing. But you still went ahead and gave money just to get Sri Lanka caught in this Chinese debt trap. So if you did this knowingly, you had information. I mean, you're not stupid. You have an economy of 20 trillion. You think you're stupid to come and lend money to a country that where the economy is crashing. You knew this. So right now, why can't you help the people of Sri Lanka and, you know, you know write this off? According to a report published last week, Sri Lanka owes $7.4 billion to Chinese lenders. This is 22% of the island nation's public external debt. India and Japan are also the bilateral creditors of the island nation. The country, which is undergoing the worst economic crisis since its independence, needs financing assurances from its lenders to secure a $2.9 billion IMF bailout package, crucial to restructure the debt. The World Bank has said in a report that air pollution in Bangladesh is causing premature death and illness is robbing the South Asian nation of economic growth. The report states that sites in Dhaka city with major construction and persistent traffic have fine particulate matter equivalent to smoking 1.7 cigarettes a day. The World Bank on Sunday said that air pollution in Bangladesh is robbing the South Asian nation of economic growth as well as causing premature deaths and illnesses. The global lender in a report said that air pollution sapped gross domestic product by 3.9% to 4.4% in 2019 and was the second biggest cause of death and disability. That year, air pollution caused 78,145 to 88,229 deaths, the World Bank estimated, with the capital Dhaka the most polluted in the country. The report added that sites in Dhaka with major construction and persistent traffic have fine particulate matter equivalent to smoking 1.7 cigarettes a day. Dandan Chain, acting country director for Bangladesh and Bhutan, has said that ambient air pollution puts everyone at risk, from children to the elderly. She added that addressing air pollution is critical for the country's sustainable and green growth and development. To reduce air pollution impacts on health, the World Bank has recommended immediate actions, including improving public health services and response mechanisms, improving air pollution data monitoring systems, investing in early warning systems and engaging in further research. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.